بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, Continuing with الضحى الله عز وجل in the sixth verse gives Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم reasons to be confident reasons to believe in his mission by reminding him of favors he has conferred upon him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before he was ever commissioned alayhi salatu wa sallam alam yajidka yatiman fa'awa this is the first favor did he not find you an orphan and gave you refuge were you not a weak young boy lost his father and his mother at a very young age were you not an orphan and then who took care of you who supported you who cared for you who provided refuge from one who never accepted your faith his uncle after his grandfather his uncle took care of him alayhi salatu wasalam who refused to accept the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, right? And he kept caring for him, protecting him, supporting him, though he was not on his religion, alayhi salatu wasalam, right? So Allah is reminding Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, were you not an orphan and he, the Almighty, provided shelter and refuge for you and a source of protection and support? So if he's done this for you before way decades before you were ever commissioned would he abandon you and forsake you now then another favor he and he found you lost or misguided not upon the path and guided you what were you before the mission what were you O Muhammad before this mission you were not upon guidance although Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam never prostrated nor worshipped any idols right but the simple fact that he was never on the path of Allah Azza wa Jal is enough to say that someone is not guided right so Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is again reminding him, you were raised and grew up and cultivated by jahiliyyah, by polytheists, and where the environment was all a polytheistic environment that you grew up in. And Allah Azza wa Jal rescued you from all of this and made you on the path, and not only that, but commissioned you to carry the mission of monotheism to humanity and jinn. Alayhi salatu was salam. Wa wajadaka ailam fa'agna. And he found you poor and made you self sufficient. This is another favor Allah Azza wa Jal is reminding Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with. To reassure his heart that we've taken care of you before without giving you any responsibility then how can you think or how can anyone else think that we will abandon you and forsake you after having commissioned you to convey the message you were poor he was a shepherd sallallahu alayhi wasallam كنت أرعى الغنم على قراريط لأهل مكة. I used to be a shepherd for the the people of مكة. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, through the wealth of Khadija رضي الله عنها, made himself sufficient عليه الصلاة والسلام. So these are enough reminders and reasons for you, O Muhammad, to be assured. To feel confident 
that you were not and will not be abandoned alayhi salatu wasalam. And then the speech shifts and instructions come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam. فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ So, as for the orphan, do not oppress him. And as for the beggar, then do not repel him. The one who is a petitioner. Now a petitioner where it was interpreted, a sa'il, was uh, interpreted to mean two different things. Either someone who's asking for wealth, for money, which is a beggar, or someone who's asking for knowledge, meaning seeking to know more about the mission of Muhammad So Allah Azza wa Jal said, so now after we remember these favors upon you from Allah Azza wa Jal, be mindful of these two types of vulnerable, weak people, an orphan and a needy person. An orphan, that was the state that you were in. A person in need, that was another state you were in. So after remembering these favors, remember that you need to care for such people putting yourself in their position as you actually were, alayhi salatu wasalam. And these instructions were actually extracted and derived from the environment he, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, was living in, uh, in Quraysh. The, the, uh, the environment was not very caring about such uh, people, such weak and poor people, uh, in Mecca and in the Quraysh. So Islam came and gave each his or her right and uh, enjoined that people fulfill these rights and promised a beautiful reward for those who do fulfill and warned against the consequence of uh, failing and to fulfill and violating these uh, rights. وَأَمَّا uh, And as for the favor of your Lord, report it or talk about it. Now, this here, this last verse is a bit tricky to understand because Allah Azza wa on one hand is telling us to, to ba talk about the favors he uh, bestows upon us. Whilst on the other hand, we are warned against show off, right? So how do we, how do we, call, you know, exactly, how do we look at it in a, in a correct way? Well, the scholar said, intentions is, uh, an intention is something in your heart, it's only Allah Azza wa who knows about it. So when you start saying, oh Allah Azza wa Jal enabled me to do this or do that, if you have in your heart that you're showing off and you're showing a status above those who are listening to what you're saying, then Allah Azza wa Jal is going to deal with you and treat you and give you the recompense according to that. But if you're sincere and you're just saying it with humbleness in your heart, as a way of saying Allah Azza wa Jal is generous, Allah Azza wa Jal is benevolent, Allah Azza wa Jal is kind, and He bestowed these upon me, then He, the Almighty, will know that, and again will give you the recompense accordingly. Now, to sum up the surah, uh, which is something that was very touching from what I heard when I was researching for this uh, for the uh, and preparing for the class uh, as we said that the face value of al akhira and al ula that uh, commonly is used is the the, the hereafter uh, the the ula and akhira meaning the first and the end to mean dunya and akhira this worldly life and the hereafter but there is uh, a broader meaning 
to uh, these two terms. One talking about the initial state and one talking about the consequence or end state of everything. Everything. Right? In the verses in the, in the surah, Alam yajid yatiman. So this was the beginning. This is the initial. Fa'awa, this is the end. The consequence. Misguided or not upon guidance. This is the initial state. Fa'awa, this is the end. This is the consequence. Right? You were poor in need. Fa'agna. And then, so this is the end. Now, let us, in order to be practical when talking about the Quran, let us apply this to our lives, brothers and sisters. Alam yajid kayatiman fa'awa. Yes, we might not all have been orphans, though, though I was one, right? But that's not the point. But did we not go through a period of time in our lives where we felt, felt so weak and vulnerable, just like an orphan would feel? And then out of nowhere, without the least expectations, Allah Azza wa Jal made the consequence something. That's totally opposite of how the beginning started, the, the, the starting point looked and appeared. We sure did. Were we not misguided? Some of us are new to Islam, altogether reverts to Islam. Some of us were not practicing people. We were misguided. Some of us might not have prayed for a long period. But then Allah Azza wa Jal Hada Guided. Alhamdulillah. Did we not go through situations in our lives where finances were tight? We didn't have money. We didn't have sufficient money to make ends meet. Did we not? And then, from means where he least expected, we were provided for by Allah Azza wa All of this, when we think about it, we need to remember and be always mindful of the fact that we are dealing with a generous, loving, caring Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And put these in perspective and remember مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى That Allah Azza wa Jal never abandoned us. Whenever we needed Him, He was there for us. He supported us. He provided for us. He protected us. He gave us moral support. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to uh, we need to deal with our Lord based on this. Based on having what is called in Arabic husnul dhan thinking good of your lord thinking positive of your lord have good expectations of your lord as Allah says in the Qudsi narration I will be for my slave as he thinks of me so this surah the theme of the surah is have trust in Allah He's not going to forsake you. He will be for you, but work to earn that. Be deserving of the support of Allah Azza wa Jal. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to have this husn al -dhan. And we say, oh Allah, our thought in you is good, that you will not punish us, and that you will grant us a good end. And that you will admit us along with our loved ones into paradise, into Al-Firdaus. So, 
grant us. Allahumma ameen. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu